Do you wish you could make 3D printed light boxes like this one? In today's video, using simple step-by-step -step procedures, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And by the end of the video, you should have enough knowledge to be able to make pretty much any light box you want. Quick search on Google, found a logo on Wikipedia, and we'll just save that to our folder. Even though we downloaded an SVG, it won't import into Fusion, so we're going to use Convertio.co to allow us to do that. So to bring the logo into Fusion, we're going to use the Insert menu, then Insert SVG, choose From My Computer, and then Locate the File. Click OK. You want to choose Flip Vertical, click OK, and then Finish Sketch. To create our box, we're going to go into the Create menu, down to Box, choose our plane, and then drag out around the logo. Choose a height of around 10 millimeters. Using the Move tool, position the box evenly around the logo. Now we're going to use the bevel chamfer tool to put round corners on our light box. Selecting all four corner edges, using the middle mouse button to move around and zoom in and out. Also use the perspective cube to make it easier to select these. We're going to use a radius of 10 millimeters, but you might need a different one depending on what logo you're downloaded. We're going to use the shell tool to hollow out the back of the box. Using the perspective cube highlighted, choose back so we're looking at the back of the light box. We're going to make our rear cover by extruding the face of the inner part of our light box and we're going to make it as a new component. Extrude it out 2mm and click OK. We're going to rename the component to rear cover. This will make our life easier later, as you'll see. Use the Move tool to position the rear cover to the back of the box. If you're having trouble selecting the rear cover, make sure that Bodies is selected in the Move Object drop-down. We're going to cut out the objects from our logo so that we can put them back in as separate components so we can control the colour. We'll extrude back 3mm which ensures a clean cut. We'll choose cut in the operation and click OK. Let's switch the sketch back on so we can extrude the shapes. I start with the red box, but you can actually do all of these together. We're going to extrude it back 2mm, because that's the thickness of our shell. Choose New Component and click OK. Choose Extrude again and do exactly the same, this time choosing all the letters. Again, it's 2mm, New Component and click OK. And now I'm just going to rename the YouTube and the red box components individually. Looking at the back of the box, we're going to use a cylinder to create a pillar that will take a screw to hold the rear cover. So I used a 9mm diameter cylinder. 6mm high, this should keep it 2mm from the back of the box, allowing the rear cover to sit nicely in the void. So now we're going to use the Move tool to move the cylinder so that it fits nicely in that corner. To 
save us making these four times, we're going to use the pattern tool to do it for us. Select our object and then we click on the axis button and choose the red and blue options highlighted. We can drag the arrows across and down and position them exactly where we want them and then we'll change the quantity for each axis to two. And then we just click OK. Now we're going to turn on our rear cover again and we're going to put holes through that and the pillars at the same time. And to make things a little easier for us we're going to reduce the opacity of the rear cover down to about 30%. You can use the hole tool to create screw holes but I want to do all four pillars and the rear cover at the same time so I'm going to use a cylinder and then we'll use the pattern tool to position it into the four places and then we'll use extrude and cut and do them all at the same time. I made this cylinder 3.5 millimeters in diameter and changed the operation to new component and click OK. Now we're going to use the pattern tool exactly the same way as we did previously, selecting the object, choosing the axes, setting the quantity and then positioning and lastly clicking OK. Now we're going to cut these four holes. You're going to have to turn off the rear cover because you won't be able to select the cylinders. Select the cylinders. Turn the rear cover back on. And then we're going to change the operation to cut. Choose a distance of about minus seven or eight millimeters. As long as it doesn't come through the front of the face, you're okay. Here you can see all the objects you'll be cutting through and then just click OK. Now we're going to move the rear cover and position it next to the main object so that we can get it ready for our slicer. Set the opacity back to 100%. Lastly we're going to make the box deeper by extruding the faces of the outer rim and the pillars up by about 25 millimeters. Lastly, export our light box out as a step file. Enter the name you want to save it as and click export. On a fresh project, add our step file. And as you can see, it's a bit big for my build plate. So I'm going to reduce the size down. I make it 230 millimeters long. I also rotate uh, here because I like my projects to run front to back a build plate. Going into object mode, which you can see highlighted on the left, we're going to set the colors for each of these components. I choose the master object and change the filament color to white, which in my case is in AMS slot 3. Change the red box to red. This is where labeling earlier comes in handy. And select and highlight all of the YouTube solids and change them to a black filament. Initially, I thought we'd be ready to slice the plate now, um, but I've made a bit of an error. I forgot to put a hole in for the lights to go through the rear of the light box. So it gives me a perfect opportunity to show you how to use negative components within the slicer. So with our master object selected, right click and choose add negative part and then a cylinder. If you get this warning box, just click OK. There's nothing to worry about. Position the cylinder roughly and we're going to size it to seven millimeters. Once you've positioned it where you want it, click slice plate 
and we're ready to go. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Um, and if you like, leave a comment in the section below um, for other projects you might like to see. This one's complete. It's got four screws in the back, a USB plug that powers a cobbler, which is stuck right through the middle. I can't plug it in, unfortunately. It just blows the camera out completely. But I'll leave one or two stills right at the end of the video. This was taken in daylight, so it's not the best. The possibilities are endless. You could use your child's name. You could use a different logo. You could put a black case in around it so it looks like it's in an old TV. There's so many things you can do with this. Thanks for watching. Until next time.